What do you think is the most difficult thing for the majority of people in this country to understand about race and racism? I think it's hard to understand the problems that affect other people besides yourself or besides people in your own race, especially like people that live in not very diverse areas like in the north. A lot of people, I think, tend to believe that racism doesn't exist more so up there or more so just in areas where it's mostly white people. Um, also, I think like there are there are some people that are like, oh, I'm not racist, and I've been white, and other people are racist, so racism doesn't really exist. So I think just conceptualizing that there are people that are racist, and that there are systems put into place that like, people are. How were your thoughts and beliefs about race and racism formed? I think, um, well, okay. I'm half Hispanic and half white, so half of my family is of color and half of my family is white. So I think seeing them and how differently they interact with other people in public and like the different concerns they have about how they appear to society. I mean, I think the one thing, well, I just, I just feel like seeing my mom interact with people and seeing my dad interact with people, my mom is his way my husband, I think seeing her have to be a little bit more cautious kind of showed me the reality of it. And I also think, you know, I, I grew up in like, Houston, it's one of the most diverse cities in the United States. Um, I've always known a lot of people of color. It's always been a subject that's been talked about a lot, so it's never really something that I doubted if it was there. But a lot of people from less diverse areas, it is. What's one race-based topic that you wish more people talked about or understood? Uh, I think the fact that people of color are usually held to a higher standard than white people, both them. Socially and then also in the workplace or in schooling. And one thing that I've always noticed is my mom, um, she's just people consider her to be very pretty, but she always feels the need to have makeup on. Like, even if we're going through a drive through, like if we're at home in our pajamas and she wants to go get something to eat, she has to put on makeup first. And I always ask her, like, the like, it's just a drive through, they're going to see you for two seconds, they're not going to remember your face. But she's like, I have to, because otherwise they're going to think that I'm, like, some, like, ratchet girl from, I don't know where, but, like, the people on the white side of my family, they don't feel the same way. And the, the I, I've often noticed it's more acceptable for white people to look like sleepy and tired um, or to can express that they are than it is for people of color. Like they have to just pretend like you know, they look like this naturally. And honestly, I think it's also something where people of color are pressured into fitting into Eurocentric beauty standards. And because white people do that just with their face, um, it's not as much of a pressure for them. Yeah. That I'm like some like ratchet girl from I don't know where, but like the people on the white side of my family, they don't feel the same way. And the, the I, I've often noticed it's more acceptable for white people to look like sleepy and tired um, or to can express that they are. Than it is for people of color. Like they have to just pretend like you know they look like this naturally. And honestly, I think it's also something where people of color are pressured into fitting into Eurocentric beauty standards. And because white people do that just with their face, um, it's not as much of a pressure for them.